All right. Thanks, everybody who's already on the call. We'll just be getting started here in a second or two. Um, really appreciate all of you jumping on. Um, excited to be talking today about Triple Connect AR uh, and, uh, and the LiDAR scanning capabilities, as well as some other updates uh, that we've made. So as everybody starts to trickle in here, we'll get going in just uh, a few moments. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, I'll be turning off my camera and mic for just one second until we're, we're ready to get going, but looking forward to it today. Thanks to everybody slowly joining in here. We are just about to kick off. We're just going to wait another couple minutes or so uh, to allow a few more fee uh, people to trickle in and then we'll get going. So just sit tight and uh, we'll kick the webinar off here in just another minute or two. Thanks everybody for joining today. Okay, we're just a minute or two after our planned start time, so we'll get going here uh, just briefly. Uh, as the last handful of people start to jump into the call here, uh, we'll just go over uh, kind of the expectations for today, what we're going to cover, um, and uh, and how we'll kind of proceed with today's webinar. Um, obviously, today uh, we're we're going to be talking about Trimble Connect AR version 2.0. Really excited about this recent release, and really uh, really proud to have uh, product manager Ben Broad join me on the call today. Um, so really keen to talk about the uh, latest and greatest features coming to the new um, to the new version. Specifically, talking about uh, the new lidar scanning capabilities that uh, that Ben and the team have implemented, and how that can be used in practice. Um, what some tips and tricks and best practices to get the most out of that capability are as well. So we'll really cover that that feature uh, in depth uh, and th those workflows and what we've done to make that as seamless and kind of easy to use as possible. Um, so as we get going through the webinar today, I'll just ask anybody if you have a question, if you have a, a comment or anything like that, feel free to throw it into the chat or into the Q&A. Um, ben and I will be doing our best job to keep an eye out for anything coming through uh, on that end. Um, so as we're going through, feel free to just throw those into the chat and we'll do our best to answer them as they come up. But we will plan to have uh, some dedicated time for Q&A toward the end of the presentation as well. So just go ahead and think about that um, if it comes up. If uh, you know any of your colleagues uh, were, were meant to be here and they couldn't make it, um, I know this isn't always the best timing for different regions when we're trying to you know have a webinar that's available to everyone around the world all at one time. Uh, if it's not a good time or whatever, we are recording this, so we'll share this out later. So feel free to share this with any colleagues or friends that may have missed uh, today, or or you know feel free to reference back to it uh, at a later date as well. So without further ado, we'll get going here. Um, 
me. I'm the one who's been <laughs> talking so much so far here. My name is Nathan Patton. I'm a product marketing manager at Trimble. I've been with uh, Trimble for the past four years, but actually worked as a surveyor in both construction and legal surveys uh, for a number of years in Canada uh, before I ever joined Trimble. Um, I always love to put slides like these up here. Um, the, the QR code on the left takes you to my LinkedIn page. Uh, I'd love for you to scan that, reach out, connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. And, and I always welcome, you know, feedback uh, interactions. Uh, if, you, if you ever have thoughts or, or questions or want to reach out at all, uh, I absolutely love when that happens and, and uh, am always keen to, to make connections and, and uh, continue to talk about the construction industry and the geospatial industry as a whole. So that's, that's my background, what I'm doing here uh, at Trimble is focusing on our buildings construction uh, uh, portfolio and working with with uh, fine product managers like Ben Broad to make sure that uh, when we bring these great solutions to the market, we're able to uh, to enable all of you to be successful with them. So without further ado, I'll let uh, Ben introduce himself. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Ben Broad. I'm a product manager responsible for Connect AR and some of our other um, uh, AR uh, solutions. Um, I'm originally a civil engineer um, way back when, but I have been with Trimble for an awful long time now. But, you know, during that time, it's been a lot of it working out on projects um, with a wide range of folks in quite a wide range of places. So, um, yeah, really keen to sort of share what we've been working on. I think it's pretty cool um, and uh, looking forward to speaking to that um, shortly. Great. Yeah, Ben. Thankfully, between uh, you know, between the two of us, we do bring some of that construction experience. But um, construction is always changing, and so are these these technologies. And so, you know, Ben and I really approach all of this by trying to center ourselves in what is actually happening in the industry, what is actually happening, boots on the ground in the offices, in design, in the field. Um, so everything that we've kind of worked on that you'll see today has really been de designed and developed with with that end use case in mind so hopefully you'll you'll see that kind of come through in the workflows and the and the kind of capabilities that we've we've built into the product um you know we really hold that uh, as the key driver here is is how is this actually going to be used in construction in practice and how can we make that easier uh, better, um, you know, address the problems that you're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. So today we'll cover uh, just a quick refresher on what Connect AR is in general, just in case you may have forgotten. Um, there's a lot of great, uh, great features in there. So we'll cover a quick refresh of what the tool is and what it's really meant for today. Um, and then jump into kind of that natural extension of why we we kind of brought on this scanning capability and why we um, made the updates that we did in the second version here, um, really all at an aim of connecting the field and office, right? Based on that that feedback we'd been hearing and based on the experiences we've had getting on job sites, talking to 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 all of you, boots on the ground, understanding what actually, you know, could make an impact in your workflows. And then Ben will cover uh, the actual best practices, tips and tricks, how to get the most out of these capabilities, uh, what to try and avoid, what kind of is the best use case for this tool. It's not a, a one size fits all. It does not replace, uh, you know, some of your other scanning methods, but um, with the right approach and the right, uh, with the right workflows, uh, this can be a really, really fantastic tool uh, in your, in your workflow to help better connect your field and office teams. Uh, and then finally, we'll finish off with a few examples from beta customers and different projects that this has been kind of trialed out on across the world um, and how that's implemented and made a difference in those projects, um, as well as uh, finishing off with some open Q&A. So like I said, if you have questions throughout, feel free to throw them in the chat, but we will have some dedicated time towards the end uh, to hopefully cover anything that we may have missed. So Going back to the beginning of all of this, right? Trimble Connect AR came out uh, a few years ago now, so it's been in the marketplace for a little while. Uh, and even in that time, it's really evolved, right? From a very simple kind of viewer in its early conception into a much more robust tool that's really focused on uh, really connecting your teams, connecting superintendents, project managers, um, uh, foremen, uh, site engineers, et cetera, uh, between office and, uh, and field. So when we released uh, Trimble Connect AR, right, it was really about making uh, digital design data, 3D models, 2D models, much more accessible. Um, you know, you didn't need to have an engineering background. You didn't need to have this uh, kind of 
tribal knowledge of being able to look at a 2D paper plan and seeing what that looks like uh, in 3D in your head, right? There's this kind of historic knowledge of, of people who have been in the industry for a long time that they can just look at a 2D plan and immediately know what that's going to look like in a 3D environment. But as we all know, that that workforce uh, uh, dynamic is changing a lot, right? We have more people with that uh, kind of background uh, retiring and exiting the industry while we have fewer uh, new uh, people entering the industry. And so it creates this obviously A, labor shortage, but B, this gap of understanding and this gap of knowledge transfer uh, of how to look at those kind of conventional uh, plans and be able to see how that's actually going to get built in the world all around us, right? So we built this one-to-one -one scaled augmented reality tool that allowed anybody that had access to an iPhone or an iPad or any Android device as well, really, uh, to be able to, any AR enabled device, I should say, uh, to be able to visualize those models, 2D or 3D in the true environment, right? Making it so much easier to understand and interpret how that design was going to get built physically on the job site so that you could help speed up that learning curve and help provide more tools to provide context in the construction process, right? And this, as, as we kind of grew, Connect AR evolved to really enabling construction coordination. So prior to actually building, uh, verifying, does the design meet uh, the, the specifications? Does the design fit on the job site, right? Um, as, as the project evolves, things get field fit, things change in the field, revisions uh, are, are either behind or ahead in the office. Does that plan still work? Can we still build uh, according to this design, right? And then after things are built, did we do it the right way? Um, did we put the flange the right way? Did we turn the bend in the piping uh, the right direction, left instead of right? You know, Do we have uh, things generally where they're supposed to be? Do we have the right number of outlets um, You know, and doing those things, um, being able to largely validate, okay, did we actually build uh, this, this physically against uh, the, the design the way that we thought we were going to? Um, and then all of that really drives communication, right? It, it gives a, a better way to connect your office and field staff by being able to contextually look at that design that was previously kind of, um, you know, held to only that office uh, side out, outside of the 2D printed plans. And it enabled more communication. It enabled more uh, eyes on designs. It enabled faster updates and easier process to get the latest revisions and really make sure that, um, that, that, construction is progressing according to the plan, right? Um, and we've also seen it, especially during the COVID pandemic, where not everybody's able to get physically out to the job site, or now we have more situations of remote work or people are in different, uh, you know, disparate locations. This became a great tool to be able to uh, almost, you know, FaceTime or, or get on a Teams call with the rest of your team that are potentially in different locations and show that design overlaid in context with multiple people, right? So now you're saving uh, travel time, you're saving um, uh, commuting time from different cities or even just locally from job to job to job. Um, this kind of made that communication um, that one step easier, right? Um, and just as a, as a blanket kind of background, right? Trimble Connect, AR supports all of your common uh, BIM formats from Navisworks, Revit, IFC, all the way to you know PDFs and DWGs. So really anything that you're you're typically using, um, Connect AR uh, is is pretty uh, capable of handling uh, for the most part. And so, like I said, it was all about delivering context, making it easier to understand and interpret those designs, making it uh, more intuitive to interact with that design data, right? You don't need uh, a robust engineering background to be able to use these tools. It's just something as simple as using a, a device that all of us kind of have in our pockets these days, um, you know, and we made it as simple uh, to align this complex 3D geometry. Uh, we made it as simple as, you know, pulling up a menu at a restaurant these days, you simply scan the QR code uh, and all of that work is kind of done for you. Um, so really trying to build tools that anybody can use, um, democratizing access to all of this information to help really build tools and build bridges for collaboration, get more people uh, able to talk the same language and see the same uh, the same design in context, see the same, see the same uh, situation, right? Um, and so as we kind of look into that 
workflow, right? The why we addressed the why we brought in, uh, you know, the LIDAR scanning was because when we look at this typical process, right, construction kind of typically flows uh, in, in a common uh, water falling process where we start with some design uh, and then we go into construction and, and, uh, and execution. And Triple Connect AR in its previous versions really helped to come in and, okay, we've made a design. Well, now we can visualize that design. Is it going to fit on the job site the way that we think it will? Can we actually build this the way that we think we can, right? And so it helped get ahead of some of that rework, get ahead of some potential issues later down the road, right? And after we've constructed, right, it helped us to, to visually inspect it. We build this the right way. And we created really fantastic tools uh, that connect you into Trimble, uh, into the Trimble Connect ecosystem, uh, things like to-dos, right? Where you're able to spot a mistake and do something about it. You can take an, uh, a picture like you're seeing in the animation on the, on the bottom there, and you're able to make some comments. You're able to tag people and, and alert uh, people and, and make sure that you're all kind of collaborating and working together, right? But where this stopped short was that it's just that picture right? While it's referenced to the model, while it's linked to that digital um, ecosystem, there's not more data associated to it. You'd still have to go take your tape measure out to measure that uh, gap that you think is too small. You'd still have to go and take, you know, your tape measure out to be able to address, um, you know, these different, uh, these different measurements, right? And so it was always missing, missing that bit of spatial data to help drive validation and drive that discussion forward. So now when we look at, you know, being able to capture point clouds with this LIDAR scanner on something as simple and accessible as an iPhone or an iPad, we're now able to fulfill that kind of workflow, right? A lot more holistically. We're able to visualize the model. We're able to validate it's been built in the right place or that it's going to fit. And if it's not, not only can we upload photos and pictures, we can upload thousands and thousands of points that help to provide further context in a 3D environment, right? If a picture is worth a thousand words, this point cloud must be worth millions, right? That's the, that's the kind of saying. And this really was, was very logically to us the next step in furthering that workflow of connecting your field and office teams, right? So it's all about getting everyone on the same page at the end of the day. If we can help provide more tools for communication, if we can help provide more data that drives the discussion instead of, uh, you know, conjecture or, or subjective uh, interpretation, right? This provides uh, the facts. This provides a level playing ground so that you're not providing a, a problem to your team. You're providing data and you're helping drive, okay, this is the situation as it is. Now, what do we do with it? Um, and so Ben will cover this in a, in a lot more detail, but largely this is uh, this capability is going to be available on any iPhone Pro, Pro Max, and iPad Pro, really any iOS device that has that LiDAR scanner. Um, there are no Android devices today that have uh, a LiDAR sensor, um, so we don't obviously support this capability uh, on the Android platform, but uh, who knows, maybe someday they'll they'll adopt that sensor and we can, we can bring that uh, across as well. But for now, just the iOS devices. Um, so importantly here, what problems are we solving and what are we not? solving, right? So with LiDAR scanning capabilities in Connect AR, one of the key things that we're solving is we're making this data, this capture really easy and accessible. So you can see in this, in this video here, this is exactly what you'll see in the application on the device. When I pull this up and I start looking around, I can see this data filling in almost like I'm painting the world around me. It's extremely intuitive. It's immediate real-time feedback. So I know the quality of the data while I'm capturing it. I can see if I have any you know, issues of, of drifting data or things that just don't look right that I wouldn't want to send over. Um, and I can see that sense of quality, right? So I know exactly what I'm gonna be sharing with my team before I ever hit that sync button. But also, you know, it's a really clear, intuitive process. There's no complex uh, station setup or registration or, or geo-referencing process or anything like that. It's really easy for that field user to be able to simply, you know, open up the application and, uh, and start scanning, right? So they're really easy uh, uh, capture process and sharing process. 
what's more, like I mentioned, right? If you uh, if you scan a QR code in the typical um, uh, BIM alignment process here for Connect AR, or even if you do a manual alignment process uh, for your model, the point cloud that you capture that scan data is automatically geo-referenced when you pull that back uh, through the cloud, right? So there's no uh, manual work that needs to be done in that case. It's automatically coming back to the office referenced to your BIM data set, to that BIM coordinate system, right? So really speeds up that process, really helps you lean into that ability to kind of connect what you're capturing to what you've designed uh, and really speed up that process of validating uh, that data back, right? Um, so basically, when you capture this point cloud in the field, uh, you'll see in, in later examples that data just goes straight back into Trimble Connect, uh, which you can then pull down into you know, your, your industry standard uh, uh, tools like RealWorks or Trimble Business Center uh, or Recap or you know, any of the other kind of tools that you want to use. Uh, so long as it supports the LAZ format, um, you're able to pull that in really easily and start working. So really fantastic kind of expeditious workflow here, right? You cut out a lot of the hard parts uh, of typical laser scanning and reality capture. And then finally, just simply that that speed of action, right? There's there's very little setup time. There's very little process that you need to do. It is as simple as kind of hitting that scan button. You don't even need a model technically in your project to be able to capture a scan. Ben will get into that a bit more later, but you know you can do it in a blank project. You can do it in a project with a 3D model, with a 2D model. It's really up to you. Um, it's as simple as hitting the sync button and that point cloud goes straight back to Trimble Connect. Um, you also can use uh, th these capabilities in an offline environment. You don't have to be connected to the internet. So there's so much flexibility. It's really fast, really easy for you to kind of do what you need to do and share that data back. Um, and Ben will get into some of those workflows a little bit more. So with all of that in mind, right, some of the key kind of applications that we see being benefited from this, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a handful here. And one of the first ones is being able to kind of supplement your existing scanning that you might be doing, right? So if you go out with an X7 and an X9 in a tight mechanical room like the one in this example, there's going to be spaces where it's just not economical for you to try and position your scanner to go capture every nook and cranny and, and you know, every last millimeter of that space. Um, and so in these cases, you can see, I'll play that video again. You can see in this video, right, all the green is captured with an X9. And I have this small corner of my of this room that's just left uncaptured because I didn't want to try and position the scanner back there. And, you know, it's such a tight space. I'm not going to be able to capture good data anyways. So in that case, we pulled out the iPad, quickly scanned that area, and at least it's able to kind of fill that picture in, right? It's able to kind of supplement and fill in little gaps so that you can move a little bit quicker um, so that you don't have to kind of always wait uh, to position the scanner every single time. Um, and really appreciate the, the, the questions coming through. And, and Ben, I know you're going through like fire, making sure that you're, you're hitting them all. So I appreciate that. Um, just want to make sure that those are being covered. Um, okay. So that's one great one. Another one is really just quick and easy coordination issue resolution, right? So the example that you're seeing on the right, uh, you know, one of our colleagues, Steve Ostrowski went out to a job site. This is a residential apartment building. You know, Ben will cover a little bit more uh, later, but in this case, we realized out in the field, right, there's a difference between what was built and where it was supposed to be built. And so this can happen all the time, right? Uh, designs are changing. Uh, things are things are kind of constantly happening. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're actually able to capture what's really there in the real world versus what is supposed to be there. And so rather than just simply taking a picture and then arguing, well, should that be there or should it be over here? You're able to capture the scan and, and really quickly and easily take some measurements and, and get that better sense of contextually what's, what's happening um, and, and where else you can go. Um, yeah. So one question I see uh, in the Oh, Ben's going to answer this one, but uh, yeah, no, it's not just um, it's not just real works that the that the LAZ files um, are accepted by. I believe Cloud Trimble Cloud Engine uh, also supports uh, those file formats. Um, ben will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe um, you know any of those. The LAZ is a pretty industry standard format, so most uh, most of those um, point cloud uh, tools will will be able to accept that data. Um, but this is another great example, right? Just really simply getting away from uh, a, a he said, she said, getting away from, um, you know, 
coming to coming to contractors, coming to subs, coming to your GC with problems and rather coming with data, coming with an answer and a solution, right? Um, another, another great one here is just helping to capture conditions, right? So in a lot of cases um, around the world, we're seeing a lot more instances of retrofit projects, tenant improvement projects, right? Where you have an existing structure that you're trying to kind of gut and build brand new uh, uh, utilities and systems and, and architecture inside that existing frame. Uh, and in those cases, some of the plans that you're working off of, if they even exist, might be centuries old, might be decades old, might be completely and utterly incorrect. And so, um, you know, being able to capture scans like this, right, it's not something that we recommend doing your engineering uh, design off of, but it can be really useful, uh, like, like is shown in this case, to provide more context as you're going through the design process, right? You have pictures, you have uh, a rough 2D plan maybe uh, that that's kind of out of date, but with this point cloud, you're able to provide the design team, uh, that architect, a bit more context. You're able to provide, no, this is what that entryway looks like and feels, excuse me, feels like. You're able to provide that context that really helps you do a better job of modeling, helps you do a better job of coordinating and actually understanding what you're getting yourself into uh, from, from a construction perspective. Um, so uh, some key things that we'll cover, and, and again, I keep putting this on to Ben, but we'll cover in more technical detail in a second. Um, this is not meant to be you know, a replacement for your terrestrial scanning solutions. This is not going to be that same you know, millimeter level accuracy that you might be uh, expecting from other point clouds, from other scanning, right? This is from, uh, from an iPhone, from an iPad. Um, it's going to have a, a different type of quality, right? Now, we'll go over some tips and tricks of how you can get the best uh, out of this scanner, but it's not meant to be used for engineering design. It's not meant to be used for, um, you know, really precise measurements and things like that, right? We'll get into this uh, a little bit more, but, you know, here's just one brief example of the point cloud just generally looks different as well, right? It's going to kind of provide different context and different uh, use cases here. Um, the other thing that we're not really addressing with this, right, um, is these large area scans. So this isn't something you'd want to go and scan your QR code, hit the the lidar button, and then start walking your entire uh, floor of the of the entire project or something, right? You'll notice in the in the screenshot here in the back, there's that little yellow line kind of going along the floor. What we've done is put in a 10 meter uh, diameter circle, and that's the extent to which we'll capture the data. Right. The idea there is that the iOS uh, scanning sensor really only has about a range of five meters. And we don't want, even though we could get more data beyond that five meters, we don't trust it and we don't want to provide you with garbage data. So we're going to limit, you know, the, the range that you can scan with this to make sure that we're just providing you with the best, you know, trustworthy data that you can that you can work with. Um, if you do need to capture multiple, uh, you know, areas within one plan or within one project, within one model, you know, you can certainly do multiple captures, right? You can do one capture from a certain location, uh, go over, start another and keep going and leapfrogging, uh, you know, uh, between different uh, setups and stations and things like that. Absolutely. By all means, you can do that. And that's a way that you can get a little bit more data captured, but at a certain point, uh, it's going to make more sense to just simply use a terrestrial scanner uh, or or potentially, you know, a slam scanner, depending on the size uh, of of the space that you're trying to capture. So this is really just um, this is really just meant to be more of that focus tool. But there are ways you can capture a lot, uh, you know, larger areas at one time. So with all of that, Ben will jump into the best uh, practices of how to really use this and how to get the best quality data that you can uh, from there. So Ben, I will give you access here to the to the slide so you can control that. And I'll let you take Perfect. it away. Thanks very much, Nathan. And um, thanks everybody for all the questions so far. They've been excellent. And I'm hopefully about to answer some of those. Uh, so yeah, Nathan's kind of given a great overview of sort of why we're doing this and sort of how we're approaching this. Um, I'm going to dive into, I guess, a bit more of the nitty gritty, um, take you through the the workflow in some more detail uh, and then also speak to some of the uh, kind of I guess uh, field field use cases we've seen. Um, so just a recap, a uh, quick quick comment on the hardware requirements. This is obviously very important that the 3D scan app functionality is only available on LiDAR equipped iOS devices. 
So that is the iPad Pro 2020 or newer and the iPhone Pro or Pro Max 12 or newer. Um, so pretty much anything from the last, any Pro device from the last three years, you, you should be fine. Um, now, we often get asked, you know, what's the recommended device? Are there any differences? Uh, by and large, um, the, not, not especially. The, all of the LiDAR capabilities are pretty similar. Um, there is one sort of small exception, though, which we have noticed at the latest iPhone 15. I think that's got a slightly better sensor in it. Apple's pretty opaque when it comes to what actual sensors they have in their devices, but that's certainly a little bit. We've noticed it's a little bit better in terms of capture distance or, or range. Um, there's an example of a couple of little wee stockpiles we were scanning to sort of test that out on the right-hand side there. But in general, um, I wouldn't go out and buy one um, if I've already got an iPhone 14, for example. Um, so yeah, and like Nathan said, um, right now there's really not much in the way of consumer Android devices with LiDAR sensors. We're watch obviously watching that space. I'd love it for you know Samsung or someone to start producing those, but we'll just have to wait and see there. Um, right. Uh, okay. Now onto the onto the actual workflow. I'm going to cover cover two sort of options for actually going out and doing scanning because um, it's important to understand this. The first option is what we talk about. We're using our QR markers that we use for Connect AR. And what those QR markers do is they provide a sort of a connection between our model and our real world. And if we scan those markers, that essentially aligns our device to that model space and that model coordinate system. So that means that any scanning that we do um, after we've aligned with those markers, that is all then created in that same coordinate system as the BIM model. Uh, so this is a, makes it very, very easy for people to go out in the field um, you know, scan, just, you know, go up and scan one of those QR markers, align with the, with with their model to that QR marker to the real world, like they'd just be doing normally with Connect AR. And then all of the scans that they create are just automatically geo-referenced. Um, and this is kind of, I guess, uh, flips around the, the traditional workflow you have with mobile scanning, where you sort of have to go out, do the scan, and then take it back into the office and then do some post-processing or registration. So it kind of puts the upfront setup uh, on getting those markers established on your construction site. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I really like that approach because it means you can do that with your, you know, your, your digital construction team or your project management team can go and do that. And then anybody with an iPad can just go out and scan things and it's all just going to be in the right spot. So it sort of just flips that workflow around. Um, and that's, that's really all there is to it in terms of the workflow. You just, like you saw in the video there, you just scan the marker, fire up the little LiDAR scanning app, start scanning, um, and then seek your data. So that's really, I, I would say, probably the recommended workflow when you're on a, a you know, a, a project where you've deployed Connect AR. Um, but also we do support, a, I guess, a more general or slightly more flexible workflow where you don't have that marker infrastructure established. Uh, this is kind of what we call our new model workflow. Um, so within the Connect AR app, there's a little button on the bottom right um, when you're in the Connect browser, you can use that to just create a new model that will create essentially like a blank, almost like a blank canvas or a blank workspace. Um, and that will just be an arbitrary coordinate system. Um, so you can just do this anywhere, um, create that new model, and then just hit the scan button and you'll start scanning. Um, so you can see I'm just scanning those same, the same air handler units. Um, this time, that data, it's, it's going to be you know, created in that arbitrary coordinate system. It's not going to relate to my model information, um, but you know if you're if you're doing something that you're not too concerned about lining up with the model, if you just want to document something or do a quick capture, pull some measurements, um, you know this is a, a fast sort of easy workflow if you haven't gone and set up those markers. Um, and also, you can use this workflow in conjunction with sort of traditional registration methods. You know, so if you if you did this the scanning took those point clouds, imported them into something like Triple RealWorks, where you can do cloud or plane-based registration. You can still actually come back and do some registration using more traditional post-processing processing method, uh, registration methods. Um, so that's still um, an option. Um, right, so that's kind of the two, the two workflow options in, in terms of the field capture. Um, now, uh, just moving on here, the next step, which is, uh, again, we've really spent a lot of time streamlining, is just syncing that data to Connect. Um, so as you saw, when you go out and capture that data in the field, that's nice and fast. And what will happen is after you save that scan, 
um, there'll be a little sync icon pop up in the right, top right hand side. Um, and you just tap that sync icon and that will upload the scans straight to Trimble Connect. Um, so you have to trigger that manually. We did that because you might want to go back to your job trailer, get on the Wi-Fi. Um, so, you know, you can make sure you're not doing that over your, um, your data plan if you don't want to use your data plan. Although the files aren't very big, somebody asked a question before, um, the scans that we do, they're typically sort of maybe 10 to 30 megabytes. So it's not a lot of data um, compared, certainly compared to traditional uh, sort of scanning uh, workflows. Um, and then the scans that are uploaded to Trimble Connect, they're just created as LAS files. So we do all of that LAS file creation on our device, you know, on the iPad, on the iPhone, in the field, and we just send that LAS file up to Trimble Connect. There's not actually any post-processing that happens on Trimble Connect. Trimble Connect is just there as essentially a, um, you know, a collaboration platform. It's where all the data gets sent. It's where you can access the data and move the data on from there. Um, in the LAS file, we obviously have the coordinates baked in, uh, either georeferenced or not, depending on the, the workflow you used. Um, the classification of those points is all unclassified if you're doing any workflows that use that. Um, and they come in with color by default. So that's um, all done. Um, and they will just be created in a folder called Connect AR Scans in the, exactly the same location on Connect as your model. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, it's very, very simple. Um, so, you know, you can be out in the, in the field scanning, um, do the scan, save it, sync it, and it'll literally be up on Triple Connect in a minute. Uh, and someone who's, you know, at, you know, they could be in the job, in the job trailer, they could be back at the office, they could be, you know, could be another designer or subcontractor at their office across town, they can just straight away get access to that scan data. Um, now then from there, there's another sort of few different workflows I just want to sort of cover in terms of what, what you can do with that those LAS files after you've captured them. Uh, so this is an example showing our Trimble Connect desktop software. Um, you can download, download those LAS files. Uh, you can import them into the Trimble Connect desktop point cloud uh, feature. Um, and that allows you to basically bring those LAS files straight into and compare them with your model. And again, this, this video is literally showing just uh, importing those LAS files straight in from um, uh, straight in from Trimble, uh, from, from downloading them from Trimble Connect, bringing them straight into Connect Desktop. And because I had georeferenced them with the marker, they just line straight up with the uh, with the model. So you can use that to you know inspect that compared to the model. Um, Connect Desktop's got a bunch of um, sort of workflows where you can capture that, take measurements, send it off to people, action any concerns or issues, and, and deal with things. Um, Next one to look at quickly is uh, importing it to something like Trimble RealWorks. So, you know, Trimble RealWorks is our, I guess, much more sophisticated uh, specialist tool designed to work with scan data. Um, so again, download those LAS files from Trimble Connect. You can just drag and drop them straight into Trimble RealWorks. Um, you can use this to supplement traditional scan data. Um, there's a lot of workflows you can do inside of RealWorks relating to sort of refining or filtering that scan data. Uh, again, you can take a lot of measurements. You can do some um, object extraction. There's huge whole raft of functionality inside of Trimble RealWorks. But the, again, it's a it's a very easy workflow straight into that, into those types of tools. Um, and last one here to, to cover again uh, is SketchUp. Um, SketchUp ha has a, actually a really, really neat little extension called um, Scan Essentials for SketchUp. Um, so you can actually bring a LAS file into Scan Essentials for SketchUp that will show the, uh, the the point cloud in SketchUp and actually allow you to model directly off the point cloud. Um, so you can draw and snap directly onto those points. Uh, it also has a lot of tools for extracting planes. And um, it's actually very, very cool. If you haven't tried this, if you do modeling from scan data and you, you know, it's, it's worth trying because it's very intuitive um, and does a great job. So again, this is a, a workflow that's super easy, super simple. Um, you know, if you want to do some modeling from the scans. So these are kind of three, I guess, different directions you could go. These are all Trimble products, but likewise, that LAS file is pretty much industry standard. So you could bring it into whatever application that supports LAS files, um, of which there are, you know, dozens. So I can't really cover all of them. Um, hey, ben. Okay. Uh, yep. Just one question real quick that I thought would be good to answer here. Um, just a, a thought on the Trimble Connect desktop. Are you able to save that scan as a TRB to be able to view it in the web? Or is there any way to view that cloud in the web with this workflow? 
Yeah, great question, actually. Um, right now, today, no, there isn't. Um, that's, yeah, obviously something that we're uh, keen to to sort of address. But right now, today, there is, isn't a way to view that on the web. It's just connect desktop. Right. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Uh, I'll keep going because we've got a little bit more to get through. And I want to save some time to sort of open the floor for more questions as well. Um, but in terms of best practice, uh, and maybe actually, Nathan, just restart that video if you can. Um, go slow is probably the, uh, <laughs> that's probably the mantra to remember when you're doing the scanning. Um, the best results are going to be captured with slow and steady panning. And this video kind of highlights that. Um, you can see Nathan there doing a, a great job of just being nice and steady and slow, moving the iPad around. Um, overall, try to minimize the amount of movement while you're doing the capture. Um, you know, if you, and if you're trying to get something like, like at the edge of a, edge of a plinth or a slab or a pipe run, walk along the same direction don't sort of crisscross it um that'll give you the the, the, the best outputs um and sometimes shiny reflective surfaces can be challenging but i guess the advantage of mobile scanning is if you don't get what you want you can sort of just step back and maybe try coming from a different angle so you don't catch any reflections um that's a that's one of the advantages of, of the instant feedback and the fact that it's mobile scanning it's really intuitive and you'll understand if you haven't been able to capture something and you can sort of come at it from a different angle or try again um, so yeah, just some notes there. Uh, and then next, ooh, I'm trying to go next here. Oh, there we go. Accuracy. Okay. So it's complicated. <laughs> um, I know that there's been a couple of questions I've seen in the chat there about accuracy. I'd love to be able to just give everybody a number and say, that's how accurate it is, but it doesn't really work like that. Um, and I'll try and elaborate on that uh, a little to help everyone understand what, what to expect here. So in terms of the sources of error, there's a lot of sort of compounding errors um, with the, the way that we are scanning here. Um, we've got the distance we get from the actual sensor, um, the angle that you're pointing when you do the scanning. You know, we, we're um, using augmented reality um, and essentially visual odometry to sort of work out that angle all the time. Um, so there's a little bit of error creeps in there. The position of the device, and that kind of ties back to the drift that you get when you're working with AR. If, any, if you know if anyone has worked with AR, you you should probably understand that you know drift does occur and creep in the more you move around, um, and so that results in the accuracy being very dynamic, and it can vary significantly. Um, so we're definitely you know definitely not a replacement for terrestrial scanning. We're not going to get anywhere close to the types of results you can get with a tripod scanner. Um, you know, so just want to make, you know, be really upfront and clear about that. Well, this is a low accuracy, accuracy solution, but if you use it in the right way, you know, with the right approach, you can get actually very, really good outcomes. So this is an example here showing a, like a tape measure comparison, measuring the distance between the two, uh, basically those two plates on that plinth. Um, and you can see that that was actually, because it was just, we just turned the scanner on and basically stood there and scanned. That's pretty much bang on. Um, and, and those types of, you know, those types of scans, if you're not doing a lot of movement and you're only looking at a very small focused area are actually very accurate. Um, you can get some really good results out of those. Um, you can see a second example there. Um, you know, there's a small, a small delta, a couple of millimeters, but again, that's, that's really just for that super hyper-focused, uh, area right in front of you. If we look at a more sort of general, um, sort of walking around, doing a bit of scanning, um, working on a sort of, sort of a bigger point cloud. This example here is showing a scan that was done with a Trimble X9 tripod scanner. Um, so we're using really using that as the benchmark. Um, this is a, a boiler room, um, and we're just doing a measurement from the center of that target across to the across the other wall. So that's a horizontal measurement in the plane. Um, that was 4.98 meters on the Trimble X9. Um, now I've switched over, and you can see this is the scan data we've got from an iPhone 15 Pro. Um, doing that same measurement across the wall. Um, so this is just sort of a arbitrary sort of point-to-point -point measurement. And that was 4.94 meters. So in this case, we had a delta of about four centimeters. Um, you know, so that was, uh, it's sort of showing that, and that, you know, when you're at, at, at sort of the, the wider extremes of the point cloud or sort of longer distances, the, the, the inaccuracy will creep in. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard to put a number on it. And you've got to be pretty mindful of what you're doing because um, you can also, you can have a bad time sometimes if you walk around a lot and just keep walking and walking and walking a long way, it can start to really drift off. 
Um, so a lot of it comes down to good practice. Um, this is another, another look at the sort of diffusion that you're gonna see on plane surfaces. Again, this is the same comparison of the X9 scan in green versus the uh, iPhone 15 in blue. Um, and it's a bit hard to see that, but that measurement there is about two centimeters. So it's sort of showing the, I guess, the, the spread or the diffuseness of that plane surface um, that we're looking at. Um, and you know, that kind of applies all the way around the scan. You can see how it sort of lines up. It's pretty close. It's not bang on. Um, again, you get a little more diffusion around circular surfaces like pipes. Um, and you can see the opposite wall. Again, I think this was about three, three centimeters. So it's not spot on here, but it's pretty close. So again, you know, you've got to target workflows here where you're not chasing millimeters. Um, we're talking, you know, centimeters of accuracy. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, we're being very upfront about that. It's for those applications where that's the level of accuracy you require. Um, so hopefully that has answered the accuracy question. Um, now, uh, a couple of examples from the field. What, what are people actually doing with this? Which is, I think, the, always the really, the really cool part. Um, here we have a residential apartment complex in the US. So this is actually, it's a pretty big building, but it's kind of traditional stick timber build. Um, they have actually, um, the contractor here has actually got all of that modeled up, all the plumbing, et cetera, all the services are modeled up inside that um, kind of traditional timber frame. Um, and I've actually gone out and they've been doing an, an, an inspection with AR and they noticed that some of the plumbing had been installed in a slightly different location. Um, probably not a big deal, but you know, with this capability, they were actually able to just go out and do a really quick scan, um, scan where the plumbing had been installed, send that scan straight back to Trimble Connect, load that up in Trimble Connect, and then they can just check really quickly and see, does this impact any other services that are coming in here? You know, do I have any other services I need to be worried about that haven't been installed yet um, that are going to be impacted by this, the, you know, the plumber's not quite putting this in quite the right spot. Um, in this case, I actually think it wasn't an issue. Um, and often it won't be an issue, but it might be. And I guess the key point here is that you can really, really quickly validate that. Um, so even if it's not a problem, um, you can quickly know that it isn't a problem, um, yeah. which is pretty useful. And, and the other thing I'd call out there, right, Ben, is that it's really easy to share what this is looking like and why it is or is not a problem, right? I think that's the other key piece here is, is not just only, you know, making that determination, but making sure that everybody else you're working with is able to have that same conclusion, right? Because if this had gone another way and, and that HVAC system that runs parallel or or has, you know, an intersection at some point now all of a sudden is impeded because this piping isn't in the right place. Well, that could throw off the schedule that could throw off prefabbed uh, materials that now need to change right and you can see that cascading effect that 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 one kind of change has but being able to capture this data know what's coming and share that with your sub trades share that with your gc um your, your different stakeholders that's a huge tool in and of itself that's it and and also it's 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 you're probably never gonna you know you know you're never gonna get a tripod scanner app to scan this type of relatively you know probably low impact low risk kind of variation but this capability on an ipad you know a lot of people a lot of project managers that walk around job sites already with an ipad around their shoulder so you you kind of have that at your fingertips now um and that's i guess the the kind of the, the step that we're, we're we're wanting to take here is it's just dropping it's, it's lowering the the bar and, and making this accessible this type of cap capability so just a much much broader range of people for a much broader range of applications. Okay, uh, next one. And this was one um, here. I'm Me and my team are actually based in New Zealand. Um, so this one was actually a theater remodeling project um, sort of with a local contractor that I do quite a lot of testing and um, early engagement work with. Um, this was actually a really, really cool example of um, how I guess the additional context you can get from doing some scanning can really help the design team um, and also the, the build team going through a remodeling project. So this is an existing theater. I think in this case, they did actually go out and do a, like a proper terrestrial scan of the whole building. And then they modeled a, this, this really nice model off of that. And then they had a whole lot of upgraded uh, services going into the building along with some, you know, you can see they've got some new beams going in there to, um, to sort of uh, support the additional weight of all the um, units up, up on the roof. Um, but 
obviously working inside this existing kind of heritage structure raises lots of challenges. And this is a great example here of showing where, you know, some modeling was done um, and then turning on the scan, you can see, oh, there's, you know, there's the whole door there, which wasn't included in the model. So maybe that was just omitted or missed, but it's those kind of details that you can sometimes, oh, okay, hang on, this is useful to have this additional context or even where those light fixtures are on the walls. Um, so again, it's like when you're going into this remodeling project, and even if you have done a full scan with the, you know, a tripod scanner, um, as soon as you start pulling linings off walls, as soon as you start exposing areas where you maybe weren't able to access with the scanner, as soon as that sort of, you know, project starts going, um, then this capability is really good to identify field constraints and, you know, allow the team to really quickly feed back those emerging conditions um, and get, you know, immediate support um, from the, the team in the office or the design team or, or you know, their subcontractor design team if, if redesigns are, are required to, to deal with things. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the key thing, right, is that um, it, it's not going to replace getting an X9 scan or terrestrial scan, but it really speeds up that communication process, right? You know that you yeah. need some data. Uh, this, this really just helps rapidly expedite that process of being able to communicate, being able to ask these types of questions and make that decision, okay, do we need to bring out you know, the team to, to come and scan or not? Can we get away with this or not, right? And this is what'll help you kind of make those, those decisions from data, right? Data-driven decisions, making things more predictable, making things more uh, kind of uh, transparent and contextual, and then helping you make that decision, okay, do we need that extra step? Um, and, and that's really, I think, a, another piece of this, right? Is just speeding up that whole process. Awesome. So uh, thanks, Ben, for, for covering that. Um, all of that, that technical detail is really valuable. We just want to end on a few couple of uh, small things here, right? Of how do, we, how do we really see this being positioned, right? So we've talked about it a handful of times. It is the right tool for the right job. Right, you can get um, you know data that that is uh, not reliable for design. We would not recommend it for design. Right, it's not going to replace that X7, X9 scanner, the terrestrial scanner. Um, it it's not going to replace those slam scanners. Right, so there's obviously you know the different slam uh, mobile scanners. That's really targeted for that big large area. Um, that you're trying to capture, right? Whereas the X7, X9, those terrestrial scanners really targeted at engineering quality, uh, design quality data, right? This is really targeted for specific small areas. It's really meant to uh, democratize the access to that data capture as well, right? It's a different person uh, that has to get coordinated, a different person that needs to get scheduled, find their time to come to your job site to use that terrestrial scanner or to use that that slam scanner. Whereas with this, with the iPad, with an iPhone, uh, your superintendents, your project executives, right? Those team members already have that technology ready to go. They're already using those iPads uh, for their you know daily field notes. They're doing it for um, you know tracking um, hours and and labor and equipment. They're doing it for so many other things. Now this is just that other tool that they already have on them that they can capture that data, right? So it's really meant to kind of be that right tool for the right job. This isn't meant to either, you know, compete with those things either. I think all three of these types of sensors can be used in complement over the course of a project. Um, but really it's, it's about, you know, positioning the tool uh, to that right application in order to get the best results, right? That's what we're really geared towards here is making sure you get the right results uh, and reliable results from that. So with that in mind, uh, just to quickly review, you know, the updated Trimble lineup that we have now, obviously extended reality uh, with Connect AR, uh, Connect MR is still in there, uh, but just calling out Connect AR here today, um, you know, really kind of helps still bridge that gap between field and office where we're connecting you from Trimble Connect out to your field. Not only can you capture these scans with the point clouds um, and automatically georeference, uh, you know, quickly see what's going on, send that data back. You can also still use it, you know, in its uh, traditional purpose of augmented reality, being able to go back and see point data, being able to go and see layout data, models, designs, all of that stuff. So really it's it's all about creating this more holistic experience uh, from field to office and office to field. Um, so just as we, uh, before I jump into some of the Q&A that are still left open, 
Um, just want to end it here with this kind of, you know, why, why connect AR? Why are we looking at this? You know, why not any of those other kind of, uh, you know, cheaper mobile apps that you can get a subscription to? It feels like every app on the app store is now taking advantage of this LiDAR scanner in some way, shape or form. But I think, you know, the real value here of, of Trimble Connect is obviously not only are you getting the augmented reality tool set, like we just talked about, not only are you getting this LiDAR capability now, but you're getting that seamless connection to Trimble Connect, right? And Trimble Connect is really your gateway to connect you to all these other tools, to SketchUp, to Tecla, to RealWorks, to, you know, any massive other variety of tools, project site, uh, viewpoint on the ERP side and project management, right? You're able to really centralize that communication hub. So you're not going into eight or 10 or nine or however many different tools, right? You've got one ecosystem where that data is seamlessly flowing between all of your different uh, personnel, all of your different tools. Not only that, but it's so easy to push and pull that data, right? It's literally as simple as hitting that sync button and that's it. There's no other, you know, plugging in, uploading, downloading, waiting for it to process, emailing, none of that. It's all kind of, you know, immediately after you send it over. And of course, with that, um, with the QR code or even the manual uh, model alignment process, you're able to get that auto magic <laughs> uh, alignment to your BIM coordinate system. So again, just really, you know, we see this as the fastest way to capture this type of data and share it back to your field team. You might be able to go and use any of those other kind of standalone uh, point cloud capture you know, apps on the Apple App Store, uh, but none of them are going to be as connected. None of them are going to be as contextual or really construction focused, right? Uh, we at Trimble, like I said, at the top of the call, Ben and I spend as much time as we can on job sites, talking to real users of this technology. And we've built these workflows to fit into what we know you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're committed to continuing to make that better uh, release after release, day after day. So all of that to say, I think you get the most holistic solution here with Trimble Connect AR, augmented reality, uh, point clouds, uh, to-dos, connections to, to Trimble Connect and more, uh, really kind of bringing that holistic experience. So with all of that, that is what we wanted to cover today. Uh, really appreciate all of you being so engaged and asking so many great questions uh, today. Uh, as I jump into the existing Q&A, would love for anybody else to put more comments in the chat, more questions. We've still got you know, five minutes. Ben and I can stay longer as well if there's, if there's questions. Uh, we're happy to answer more questions. Um, if you didn't get a chance to ask a question today or something comes up down the road, feel free to let us know, uh, connect with us uh, on LinkedIn, or if you have our contact information, feel free to do that. Um, and if you do have questions, if you, this is something you're interested in getting a demo of or a trial of, just reach out to your local building point distributor and they'll be able to come and, and help demonstrate this and help get you set up um, to, to see how you can implement this in your workflows. So with all of that being said, um, Steve uh, Ostrowski put in the in the QA here, it was a question earlier, I believe, about being able to visualize the point clouds in Triple Connect web on the web browser. So it looks like there's a workflow um, that I actually forgot about that you can convert that point cloud and export it as a DXF from Trimble RealWorks. Uh, and then you can obviously visualize DXFs in Connect Web. So that is one way, um, you know, in the interim here now that you can still get that data, get that scan data up into the web to share it with more people, uh, which is a great tool. So thanks, Steve, for sharing that. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, oh, James. Well. We, we love Scan Essentials as well. Yep, Ben, <laughs> go ahead, sorry. Yeah, actually, that's a great question, Adam. Um, We've got the next version of Trimble Connect Desktop uh, that is scheduled to go out at the end of the month, so very, very soon. Um, and that actually does include some really nice enhancements, particularly around support for Navisworks. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, some big, big improvements there for you know existing Connect Our customers, a lot of who work with Navisworks. Um, that's there's a, a lot of a lot of good stuff in that. Um, and I'd say, yeah, demos are definitely available in South America. Um, I would need to, whereabouts in South America are you, uh, Augustin? Um, would, would definitely be able to connect you up with uh, someone local. Yeah, once we get that answer back, we can definitely, uh, definitely connect you there. Um, yeah, and again, uh, if you don't know your local building point distributor, again, you can feel free to reach out to, to either one of us um, or you can go through our, our uh, Trimble uh, Field Tech website um, and, and uh, you can find your local distribution partner there to help you get that set up with a local demo. Um, 
so that uh, should be should be straightforward. Uh, yeah, so actually, um, you know, Christops, I see a comment here about uh, being able to uh, have 2D model integration, uh, being able to view that. So uh, if I understand that that point correctly, you can view a 2D drawing in Connect AR as well and in Trimble Connect. So we support DWGs, we support, um, you know, CAD files, all of that. So you can visualize 2D files as well. We even support PDFs. So if you don't even have a, uh, a model from your team, if you have literally just a, a PDF, it needs to be a vectorized PDF, right, Ben, I believe? Uh, no, 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 actually, oh. it needs a PDF was, is fine. So yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a feature in the Connect AR app for stops that allows you to just take a, any PDF and just like literally scan and place it on your job site. It's actually really cool. Um, would recommend <laughs> take a look at that. Even better than I thought. So there you go. So yes, no, definitely a great point though. We recognize, you know, not every team works, uh, not every team works in, uh, in, in 3D, right? So we really want to try and make these tools work for, for your workflows. Um, so yeah, 2D is definitely, definitely supported in a great workflow. Um, yeah, Augustin, sorry about that. Um, feel free to, if, if, uh, you know, you need, uh, uh, any help or assistance on our side, feel free to reach out to us and we'll make sure that you get connected and, and get that, that demonstration set up. Um, sorry that, that, uh, that you weren't able to get that sorted before, but we will definitely do whatever we need to, to help, um, make sure that goes through this time. So just reach out to us, uh, or, or, you know, feel free to get back to, to the person you contacted before, but let us know. Um, all right. Seeing a few other questions here. Um, uh, internal and external sites, a question from John, is there a variation between external and internal sites? Um, if I'm uh, assuming that that question is referring to internal, uh, like inside of a building versus outside of a building, um, there, there is a difference, right? We Today we have two solutions. Uh, the indoor solution uh, targeted for buildings construction is Trimble Connect AR, and that covers everything that we talked about today. Um, whereas the outdoor version meant for outdoor uh, job sites is, um, is called Site Vision. Uh, under the hood, very similar um, applications, all but the same. Uh, the outdoor version supports uh, the GNSS receiver with the DA2 and Catalyst service. So you can actually get centimeter level positioning without needing uh, QR codes or anything to position yourself. Uh, and the great workflow there is that, you know, for instance, if you're doing uh, rough underground utility work before a building goes up, or maybe you're, you know, that's more of what your work is anyways, working outdoors, uh, you can use that GNSS to get really quality position positioning. And that actually mitigates a lot of those errors that Ben was talking about earlier um, uh, with, with positioning and drifting and all of that stuff, because we have a really reliable uh, position from the GNSS. So if you happen to be doing more work outdoors, this is a really fantastic um, way to address that. Um, so, you know, feel free to reach out uh, to us or your local uh, building point distribution partner, and we can make sure that you can uh, see what's right for your workflows. Um, yeah, thanks for, for the other comments. Really appreciate your time today. Um, any other questions coming through? Um, yeah, so uh, there was a question, uh, Lucas, uh, just on the correct way to, to position. Uh, we can go back to that slide here real quick. Um, but really, all right, where is it? I have to scythe through all of these things. Slow and steady. Is the yeah. is the correct way to do it? And there's a great demonstration here by Nathan actually on that. I think it's a couple of slides more. Yeah, sorry, one second. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this one. So just like you see in the video here, this is really how you want to do it, right? Ideally, um, the absolute best result you'll get is if you personally kind of stand still, and then you see me in this in this video just kind of moving side to side almost like you're painting a fence, just going up and over and making sure you have that overlap, going slow, going steady, not jerking around or anything like that. Um, we've tested it out as well. If you you know are more object oriented and you're kind of walking around an object, you can still get decent results there. But the more movement you, you kind of uh, bring into the equation, the more potential risk of error. So just some things there. Um, at the end of the day, what might be a good thing to do is also just try it out. It's really easy to do. It's really easy to, you know, take a bunch of scans and look at. So, um, you know, try it out um, and see what works best for you and the results that you're trying to get for the, for the workflows you're trying to kind of perform, if that makes sense. 
Um, yeah, and I can I can handle that one from John. Um, yeah. On the setup for QR markers, that's all done in Triple Connect. Um, we have a little QR marker extension. Um, there's some videos online on our YouTube channel. If you have a look for the Trimble Mixed Reality YouTube channel, that will show you a little bit of a preview there. But basically what you do is you load up your model in Trimble Connect, you enable the marker extension, and then you can go and just click where you want to place the marker. Um, and there's some tools in there as well where you can actually uh, offset and reference that marker to a point. So you could set it up next to a door frame and say, I need to go you know, 300 in from the bottom of the door and then 1.5 meters up. And that's the spot that you then need to stick your marker up. So then you just download the PDF, print it out, go stick it up. You can laminate those. They still work if they're laminated. We've even had some customers actually print them off on little steel sheets if they want something a little bit more robust and permanent. Um, but just to get it out there, you can just use paper. That's fine. Um, and, and then once that's sort of positioned in the model and set up like that, then that's what provides the link between the model position and you know you walking around with a tablet doing the scanning basically um so that's the it does you know requires a little bit of setup but the whole purpose of the markers is that that setup and alignment it sort of gets handed over to the you know, the project initiation team the vdc team or the the project managers to to manage and then that means that the people using it in the field to actually solve problems live they just go and scan that and then and then they're away. It's it's like get out your iPad, scan the marker, you're lined up, you're looking at the model within you know 20 seconds. So it's a, a really conscious design to sort of front load the investment in that infrastructure that then enables the actual construction team to get on and be really successful and then really fast, most importantly, with uh, what they're doing. Yeah, and I'd also echo, right? We're we're not uh necessarily covering it in this webinar today, um, but we have made a handful uh, of improvements as well just to the marker support and the workflow uh, of how you do that over time. So it's getting easier and easier with every release. Um, you know, we continue to kind of make improvements to that, but um, as you get going with it, we're always welcoming feedback of, of things that we could do to make it easier for your workflow. So um, if you get going and, and have some thoughts, we're always, always all ears. So let us know. Um, with that, we're a few minutes over here. Um, we're in no rush if, if there's still more questions to go, um, but uh, we seem to be kind of slowing down. Um, so at this point, I'll say, you know, if, if we don't get another question or two here in the next minute or so, uh, we'll we'll take this opportunity to thank you all again for your time today. Um, absolutely appreciate all of your time uh, and the great engagement on these questions. Uh, we will be sharing the recording here through our website in a couple of days or so, probably. And uh, we'll make a post on, on social as well. So don't don't feel like you have to go. Uh, look for it yourself on the website. We'll have it shared out on LinkedIn and stuff like that. You can share it with your colleagues uh, and refer back to uh, later. Um, but yeah, with that, Ben, thank you for your time and uh, congrats on a great release. Really excited to to see this out in the wild. Um, and uh, one thing that uh, you know that we we love to see as well, if you happen to to be out using the Connect AR, if you happen to be out capturing scans or anything like that, um, you know send us a video, send us recording, send us whatever. We'd love to see this out in the field. Uh, we'd love to see this being used. So if you happen to, you know, get a good screenshot or something like that, send it our way. Uh, we'd love to share it um, and and just boost, uh, you know, show, show the great work that you're doing. So feel free to do that uh, as well. Awesome. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll say anybody that wants to drop off, please feel free. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of handle these last couple of questions here um, as, as they pop up. But really, again, just appreciate all your time and hope you all have a great rest of your day. Yeah, I'll just cover Christoph's question there. Um, yeah, so if you scan, what, scan one marker and then you walk around a bit and you see it sort of drifted off, yeah, there is the option to um, sort of manually uh, sort of nudge that back into alignment. Um, yeah, it will still it will still have the same corner system. So yes, it will still be ge georeferenced, um, even though you sort of have moved away from that that marker alignment. But um, yeah, it, it will still work. Yeah. Cool. Great. Well, I think that's it for today. Thanks everybody again. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, until next time. All right.